Hello and welcome to the Elizabeth Johnston podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth, and I am so excited about our guest today, Yako Boyens. He is a native of South Africa and an American citizen. Fighting the sexualization of children and trafficking is personal to Yako. After witnessing the horrors of trafficking that occurred to his younger sister, he became a trafficking abolitionist in 2001. He is a well-recognized speaker on human trafficking and the sanctity of human life and can often be seen on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and many other media outlets. I am honored to feature him today on the podcast. Yako, welcome. Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you for your voice. I'm, 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 you know, I feel like I want to make the whole podcast about championing you. Oh, oh, so let me just start with saying, woman of God, your voice oh. is powerful and we're, and we're grateful for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It is a season for uh, women's voices to be recognized for sure right now. Yeah. And so um, I am honored to have been one of the many over the last um, several years that has been fighting for the children, um, which we must do. It is a very urgent hour. We're going to talk about something today that is very uncomfortable. And I really want to ask everyone to be strong enough to just sit in this place of uncomfortability today for this discussion because there are two epidemics that we must discuss, we must address head on. And the thing is, they both feed one another. And those two topics are the sexualization of children and sex trafficking. Um, over half a million children are exploited through human trafficking in America. And Yako, can you tell us more about how this became a life mission for you? Yeah, Elizabeth, we'll talk about that number maybe a little later. Uh, but for us, 1994, I was a senior in high school in South Africa. The country was on the brink of civil war. We were at the end of apartheid. It was, you know, so much of what we fight today in America was was our reality then. You, you, you're wow. at the brink of, of all of it, the culmination. Uh, my sister Ilonka was 12 years old that year. She was turning 13. And she won a national singing competition like The Voice. This is, of course, way before The Voice was even founded. Right. But she won a national singing competition and, and earned a recording contract. Now, the important part is we were raised by a single mother. Wow. I'm 18 at the time. She's 12. My brother's 13. So I'm really kind of, air quotes, the father in the house. Wow, yeah. And that year, Ilonka was trafficked. Now, we didn't know that it was trafficking, of course. Uh, we learned later on after her rescue, that she was trafficked by the record label executive. Mm. Uh, but that journey was a six-year journey. It's six years of trafficking. So in 2001, by God's grace, absolutely only ordained by, by the righteous hand of God, Ilanka is rescued, and I have the blessing to be part of the rescue when I'm there, and I'll never forget walking wow. up to my sister. Um, you know, a woman's body changes a lot, Elizabeth, from 12 mm. to 18. Uh, yeah. Almost unrecognizable. You know, I only recognized her as my sister in her eyes. Right. But also the look in her eyes immediately was not this vibrant field hockey yeah. player that's an athlete that is just life and a singer. There was something very, very MS mm. immediately. And uh, God made an impact in my heart that day so tremendously. This is in 2001. Uh, we immigrated to the United States that very year. Mm. And it wasn't until we we were sat down by Ilanka in Nashville, Tennessee. We immigrated to Nashville, where she called a family meeting and started going through in detail what men had done. <sighs> and we learned what human trafficking was from Ilanka, from a sister, from a survivor. Mm. And then the journey started of of learning. You know, you're sitting you're sitting in a moment and your world is is turned upside down. Yeah. You, one, you can't believe evil is that real. Right. Secondly, you, you're hearing things that you, the brain doesn't want to. Yeah. You, you said, stay in the moment. And I want your listeners to stay in the moment. Your brain doesn't want to. You don't want to go there. Right. Because we, we want to see the good in people. But it's not people. We're fighting about a battle of powers and principalities. Yeah. There's an enemy that doesn't play games. He comes to steal, kill, destroy. It's That's destruction right. of our children. This is not enough to break a culture. It's utter destruction. So we're learning mm. firsthand with, with gross detail what mm. men had done. And immediately 
guilt comes in. Self-condemnation comes in. Mm. How could this happen on my watch? I'm looking at my brother sitting across the room thinking, where were you? He was 13. <sighs> then, then hatred rise up on my father that, you know, at that moment in life abandoned us. He later came to Christ and reunited. But wow. you go through this emotion and then you find hope mm. in a man called Jesus. You find the hope mm. in the moment. And then you learn that the journey is a long journey. It was an 18-year journey from that moment for Elanka to find absolute liberation and true redemption in Christ. Mm -hmm. Today, a mother of three, it's her wow. story to tell, incredible woman of God, a worship leader, part of our ministry. Wow. You would meet her and never know that Satan yeah. ever, God can liberate in a way that, that man cannot fathom, but the darkness... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sexual perversion and sexual exploitation brings into a human being's life, people don't understand. People don't understand that you can break a human be being like you break a horse. People are programmable. Mm. Um, you know, we could talk about this at length. So for us, you know, yeah. you can do the calculation. I mean, it's 2024. That's 2001. We've been in this fight Whew. for a over, long time, Elizabeth. Over 20 and, years. And, yeah. and we've seen... It's 30 years since Sri Lanka was trafficked. You know, we've seen wow. we've seen cycles. We've seen we've seen presidents come and go. We've seen legislation mm -hmm. pass and not. I mean, we we can write books about this, and we do, and we're very involved in policy and legislation and rescue. But but really, what we're talking about here is the ploy, the plan of Satan. Right. And what I argue is the most effective weapon against the church. Against, And when I say the church, I mean the expansion of the kingdom of God that is at hand. Mm. Now, John the Baptist says, prepare the way for the kingdom of God is at hand. The greatest weapon against that is to sexualize and sexually break a child. Mm. So tell me what is going on in the music and entertainment industry right now. The, the Diddy story is a huge story. Um, and I think that, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, hearing you share about your sister, it would be hard for someone to understand how that happens to someone, but, um, possibly this Diddy story is bringing to light, um, just how t toxic things and abusive things are inside of the industry. What is going on inside of the music and entertainment industry? And is being involved in that industry, um, is, does that make young people easier prey? Yeah, look, infinitely more vulnerable, more exposure, more vulnerability. When people move, trafficking come in, but there's a lot of misconception and I, Elizabeth I'm going to ask you for permission to just be brutally honest on the show today sure. because there's there's a lot of misconception and I firmly believe the conserv the Christian conservative Come in on. America often fights on the wrong battlefield mm. we the, the enemy there's a lot of distraction there's a lot of hoodwinking you know and we fight the territory I'll give an example. In 2013, we made a movie called Eight Days. That movie yes. was inspired by God. That film was talking really about domestic, familial sex trafficking. Mm. A study comes out in 2023, last year, on, on the National Institute of Shelter Care, which I'm on the board of. These are the safe houses where survivors go. Right. And the study says that 25 to 47% of all sex trafficking cases in America is at the hands of the caregiver. Oh, I God. want you to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. It's familial. Mm -hmm. It's pe it's either the family or people that are in places of authority but very well known to the mm. victim. Yeah. Kidnapping is 1.7% of the crime. Yeah, that's not and, what it looks like most of the time. Of course. Right? It's, it's, it's about... Not. It's about, you know, basically hanging your job over your head. And, it's the P. Diddy situation. Yeah. Right. So now remember Maslow, Maslow, not a Christian, but Maslow draws the hierarchy of needs. It's accurate. So in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, for those who studied psych or human behavioral science, which I feel like I've got five PhDs in human behavioral <laughs> science, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs says the lowest, the lowest entry level is food and shelter. Mm. So if you think of a girl in Oak Cliff, uh, uh, Dallas, or in the Bronx in New York, which a lot of the Diddy victims come from, that that have multiple family members in jail, hear gunshots, inner city Chicago, they are 
aware when they just walk to go buy a, a gallon of milk. They don't know where the next meal comes from. You know, mm. that individual is trafficked through food and shelter. You give them stability, food and shelter, mm. a hair weave. I'm telling mm. you now, girls get trafficked, sell their bodies, mm -hmm. forced to sell their bodies for a hair weave, for having their nails done. Mm -hmm. So love and belonging. For the girls in Highland Park, Texas, mo most affluent neighborhood in the country, right? You're not mm -hmm. trafficking that girl with, with food and shelter. Mm -hmm. It's not even love and belonging. It's, it's emotional support and affirmation. Mm -hmm. So for her, which is the softest target, which is really the girl in youth group, do you see me? You know, are you speaking my language? And so the predator is just reading the situation. Now, if I know your greatest need, Maslow's hierarchy, mm -hmm. and your greatest desire, those two things, there's not a human being on the planet that cannot be manipulated sexually, that cannot be coerced. We've, we've helped rescue NFL players. Right? Because if, because if you manipulate someone's desire, their hope and mm -hmm. their dreams, Mm -hmm. So what does Sean Combs do? And it's not just an entertainment business. It just gets a lot of light because there's a lot of money, there's access, there's power. Yeah. But let's use it as a case study. And this is a real case, and I'll leave, leave the name out because the name will come out in, in, in a number of weeks. Mm -hmm. But a girl comes from the Bronx. She has nothing, but she's got talent. God's given her talent. She really has talent. She's got something to say as an artist. Mm -hmm. Sean identifies her, right? He pulls her in. He tells her, literally the words he uses, you're my boo, you're my girl. Her world is upside down. This is Puffy. This is Sean Combs. She's being recognized. She's driving in his car. Her social status goes up. Her, her emotional value goes up. Right. He gives her physical stuff. The next day, she's in the studio with a ultra high level producer. She's recording a song. He's singing on her song. Now she's at his party. He's got her. Mm. He's got her. She's giving him her heart. She's being coerced. Mm. She's being defrauded because the motive is you're going to be a sex object. Mm. You're going to go to a sex party. You're not going to have a record deal. You're not mm. going to have a, a career. You're another, right? Mm. By the time they wake up and go, wait a minute, when's it my turn for the deal? Guilt, shame, condemnation comes in. Satan is in her head. She's told this is your fault. She's told you flirted with me. She's told you're complicit. She mm. wakes up. She was drugged. She mm. doesn't know what she did. She's told what she did. Her world is upside down. She's <laughs> now complicit in breaking the law, most likely. She's she probably been filmed with it, what she she's did. She's filmed surreptitiously. She used illicit drugs. Mm. She, she ha her family has had priors. The, the, her world is done. She's completely under the control mm. of a Sean Combs. That, that is how a predator works. A predator have, you spoken, an... have you spoken to this victim? Over the past weeks and months, I've been telling you about a company called Donatio. I'm sure you've heard of the fee that accompanies every online or in-person transaction. Usually it's two or 3% of the total purchase. And this goes to the payment processor. We use these payment processors every day at our local coffee shops and our favorite retailers. Well, Donatio is a Christian payment processing company that has committed to giving away 50 cents of every dollar they earn to organizations that fight to end human trafficking, domestic violence, hunger, and homelessness while promoting adoption and other pro-life causes. They are on the front lines of shining the light in dark places. If you own a business or website, go to donatioprocessing.com and see if this would be a good fit for you. Now the fees that you are already paying to a payment processor will go to causes that you believe in. In fact, if you switch over to Donatio and and tell them I sent you, they have agreed to give 50 cents of every dollar of that to this ministry. You could do so much good without really having to do anything. So go to donatioprocessing.com, fill out the quick form, and tell them that Elizabeth Johnston sent you. Do business, do good, Donatio. If you'd like to become an elite sponsor of the Elizabeth Johnston podcast and get more eyes on your business or organization, please email us at Elizabeth at elizabethjohnston.org. Have you spoken to this victim? Yes, and we've spoken to several, and we've spoken to business associates. And look, take Sean Combs and replace the name with, with Jeffrey Epstein, with Ghislaine Maxwell, with Harvey Weinstein, and then 
and then put names in that no one's ever heard. Mm. Put put the high school principal in that we helped get arrested and thrown in jail that sodomized and abused 32 kids in his high school. The right. bus driver, the janitor. Right. Yeah. Elizabeth, the, some of the biggest mistakes America's making is this. They think human trafficking is in other foreign third world countries. Yeah. Yes, migrant children are trafficked across our border and they become sex slaves. And yes, we've lost half a million children in this country, not 385,000. But the biggest atrocity is American children mm. trafficked in America while playing softball, while going to school. Over 50% of the 50, so 25% has shared a nude image mm. of themselves. You do understand yeah. that those kids are now felons. Mm. Sharing child pornography is a felony. Mm -hmm. We have felons in youth group. Mm -hmm. We have felons distributing child porn to their friends of themselves in youth group. Right. And then they feel stuck. They are stuck. Trapped. Yeah. They are stuck. They're told mm -hmm. you're responsible. They're told the laws against you. They're told right. I'm, I'm going to oust you and expose you. If you give me time later today, there is a case I want to discuss without detail of the names, but it's probably the most, I believe, the most relevant case for your audience. And I know your audience and you've got an incredible audience. And again, I want to just thank you for your work. But I think moms and dads particularly need to change the way they look at human trafficking. Yeah. Sound of Freedom, great movie. I know mm -hmm. Tim, I, I, great. But it's not the American reality, Elizabeth. Right. The American reality is we have lost our culture morally. We've mm -hmm. abandoned God morally. Right. The church is normalizing pornography. Mm. Pornography is the entry drug to sex trafficking. Right. I've never, 30 years, we've, I, we don't count. I can't even tell you how many predators, pedophiles we've helped arrest, thrown in jail, children rescued. We just go. We don't, we don't. Mm. It's the Lord's work and the numbers don't matter. Mm. But I've never met a single pedophile that was not a porn addict. I've never right. met a single pedophile that didn't tell me it started with either their own abuse, or their own rape, their own sodomy or porn. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, because as you said, porn is the entry drug, drug. Yeah. To, to trafficking. So what is your best advice to parents on protecting their children from porn? If your child... If your child, Yako, was a parent and you had a grandchild and you were advising them on how to protect your grandchild from pornography, what would you tell them? We have phenomenal resources. And these resources, and it, it's a shameless plug, but it's not just our resources. We curate the best of the best. Our yeah. ministry, we celebrate other ministries. We celebrate right. the body of Christ. But when they go to our website, they will find John Bevere, for instance. If, you're, mm -hmm. if your son's over 16, John Bevere, incredible Porn right. free. Jo go to John. John can do it. We've got 1,200 resources on our website specifically right. to help parents navigate the conversation. How do I talk to my son about porn? Yeah. How do, when, when is the right time to talk to my child about sex? That's a whole nother conversation because the, the you know, when we autocorrect, we overcorrect as a culture. Yeah. So now you've got conservative parents that are saying, I'm going to talk to my daughter about sex at seven, so the school won't. Your child's not ready to talk about sex. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. I could agree with you more. Yeah, good, good point. That doesn't help, making. because remember, the reason mm -hmm. we say porn is a drug, mm -hmm. sex designed by God, because God says you will procreate. Genesis 3 tells Adam and Eve, you're going to procreate, build my kingdom. Yeah. Sex, I believe, and I say often, is the greatest weapon to drive evil out of a marriage when a husband and wife mm -hmm. are, are in a godly way intimate. Yeah. If it's dysfunctional, it opens gateways to hell within right. your home. Mm -hmm. We did a study, over 8,000 cases, of children having nightmares, mm -hmm. a repeat nightmare. So not a single nightmare. I'm running through an alley, and right before the guy grabs me, I wake up. I'm stuck mm -hmm. in a car, and they get me. A guy comes with a knife, repeat nightmares, right? Right. Do you know that over 87% of the time in those children having nightmares, either the mom or the dad was addicted to porn? Mm -hmm. When you watch porn, you open spiritual access to your children. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. You are telling Satan the cover is not there. <sighs> we have responsibility, That's Elizabeth, right. as parents to be sexually moral according to the word of God. Now, right. what happens when a culture starts saying, 
Let's change the language. It's, a pedophile has rights. He's not a pedophile. He's a minor attractive person. Oh my person. gosh! Yeah. When when you have the the you know the Methodist Church saying we're going to have trans and gay pastors, mm-hmm. when you normalize sex and culture, and only twenty two percent of American pastors mm-hmm. last year in twenty twenty three, amidst the year when they ask what is a woman, does the womb have value? Mm-hmm. Uh, does a child have value? You know, uh, predators should have rights. In the middle of that climate, only 22% of American pastors last year mentioned pornography from the pulpit. They won't mm. touch the issue right? because they know 45% of the men in their church struggle with it and they're scared yeah. to death to attack it. Right. What should we do if we believe that we have witnessed human trafficking? Um, You live in the Dallas area, and I am 90% sure that I witnessed trafficking actually in the Dallas airport. Dallas is one of the most frequent airports uh, that I travel in and out of, and um, I saw something go down in a bathroom that... um, I'm, this was years ago that I'm pretty sure was trafficking. And I'll be honest, I didn't know what to do about it. Yeah. I thought I, I, if I called the police right now, there's a, the girl, the girl's brainwashed. Like she's not, she doesn't even want to be rescued. You know, I, oftentimes these girls are in situations where their lives are in danger if you're trying to rescue them. And so what would you say to do if you think you've witnessed trafficking? Yeah, you well, know, you're in the, the process of witnessing a trafficking. Yeah, and, and you're right, Elizabeth. It's just like law enforcement not having enough training. They freeze in the moment. People say, well, I, I will know you don't. When, when that really mm-hmm. occurs and you go, it, could this be? He, people don't know what to do. And, and we again, we can train them. But, but really, the greatest question you can ever ask, particularly of a woman, mm-hmm. is are you safe? Are you safe? That's the not are you being trafficked? Does he hurt you? Are you safe? she will absolutely give you a signal. Her Mm -hmm. eyes will tell you, something will tell you. And then it's going to take bravery. If you're in an airport, remember, there are more people there that will support you than you think. You can step in. If she's in the woman's bathroom and the guy is not in there and strange things happen, but you can say, are you safe? And if she tells you no, you can say, I'll stay with you. Here's the rule. Closest point of authority. If you call 911 from a DFW airport, you're 45 minutes from getting in. I knew it would have taken too long. And okay. I was like, I don't know. Well, who's the closest? TSA or the next gate over? You put her in a bathroom stall. You tell her to lock the door. Mm-hmm. Sit on the toilet with her feet up. Mm-hmm. You walk around the corner and you go get a, a literally an American Airlines worker. You walk her mm-hmm. in with you. She mm-hmm. has a radio on her. You stand by that stall. And you bring Calvary in that moment. It's the, if you're in a gas station, 7-Eleven, mm-hmm. the, the little gas attendant, that skater boy that doesn't look like he knows much, <laughs> he has keys to the building. He has keys to the bathroom. He's got a panic button. He mm-hmm. is the closest point of authority. It's about immediate proximity. Yeah. Now, you're right. We often rescue victims and, and we rescue them four times. They, they go back. They run back. Oh. But, the, the, That's hard. The police get demoralized. They go, Yaku, we're going after Sarah again. Mm. Yes, because Sarah doesn't know that it's not love. Ugh. This chemical reaction in the brain with sex. That's yeah. why we say porn is a drug. It calcifies mm-hmm. the brain, changes the neural pathways. You think differently. Sexual mm-hmm. abuse changes the brain. When you sexualize a child, you activate the, activate the sex hormone prepuberty. What is puberty? Puberty is the activation of the sex hormone in the brain, mm-hmm. right? Yes. You activate it early. Now the, the kid is sexually inquisitive. Now the mom says, oh, he thinks he's trans. No, mm-hmm. you're introducing him to things right. that he's not ready for. His little brain can't handle. So are you safe? Immediate first point of authority. Right. Got to keep yourself safe. Yeah, the airport is a unique situation because you may be in a bathroom, but if you're in Seven Eleven, the predator is most likely in the building with you. Yeah, you've got to be safe. Airports are a high traffic area, right? Super high, super high. Uh, Dallas is number three city in the world for human trafficking. Not Mm -hmm. not Azerbaijan, Quadavor, the Ivory Coast, (laughs) Houston, the Woodlands, number one in the world. Oh my gosh, Yaku, how's that possible? It can't be. 
all these migrant children, we're not talking about migrant children. Mm. Yes, they're being trafficked. Yeah. We're the number one nation on earth purchasing sex from minors. The United mm. States of America, one nation under God. We have fallen that far, Elizabeth. Right. Number one. Right. Yeah. And the, what feeds this, what feeds the trafficking e epidemic, I believe oftentimes is the overall insidious sexualization of children in culture, in schools. Um, and I really, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart um, and to my audience's heart. You probably know in 2017, um, I tackled Teen Vogue for teaching kids how to sodomize one another. And, you know, I was mocked ruthlessly for doing so, um, burned a copy of a Teen Vogue magazine, got 17 million views, and we launched Operation Pull Teen Vogue. I had no organization, no money. I was literally just a homeschool mom that was absolutely righteously enraged that a fashion magazine for kids was um, raping the minds of, of our children. And so when we launched this, um, again, I was so mocked and so slandered in you know mainstream media. And five months later, Teen Vogue printed its last print edition. We really did destroy them as we launched this campaign and insisted on parents and grandparents going into stores and libraries and demanding that Teen Vogue be pulled. And they did it. And we destroyed that magazine. And it was an entirely grassroots effort. And then in 2018, um, I launched Sex Ed Sit Out, where we pulled the children out of the schools in protest and educated the you know, principals and, um, you know, different school board members and whatnot about the pornographic sex education in the schools. And so this is something that uh, my audience is, is very passionate about. And for the skeptic listening who thinks that maybe we're exaggerating, you know, this intentional agenda to sexualize our children, are they right? Are we exaggerating? And if we aren't, can you prove that skeptic wrong? Yeah, of course. And and it's when I fell in love with your work is in Teen Vogue. Remember, 10 page spread of telling a girl what lighting to use and how to pose. Right. Yeah. And, and immediately when it happened, it's like we are about to see an explosion in human trafficking of minors mm. in this country. You know, by that time, we'd been fighting that fight 16 years in the U.S. Right. And that's really when I was like, Elizabeth is special. This girl sees it. Mm. She she is she is a mom on, on a mission. And, and and cannot thank you enough. And you can't stop. you got to swing for the fences. Yeah. It, it is, it is self-evident. we got to go back to 1972, 71, 72, 73, when the obscenity exemption statutes were signed. And we have yes. to understand that it is legal in a library to have a naked image of a woman, not a portrait. And that same image in the park at four o'clock in the afternoon is obscene material with a minor. It's a 30-year jail sentence. Make it make right? sense. And make it make sense. It doesn't. And and so what was it built on? It's built on Alfred Kinsey's work. Where did Kinsey come from? You know, Fritz Bailey's sect, which is a pedophile under Hitler, had said, we will sexualize the American child. This is in 1940s. We will break that nation sexually. Rome fell because of sexual immorality. Yes. The Mayans, the, the Persians, the Asians, they all fell because of sex with children. Come on. Caesar, Caesar didn't sleep with women. He only slept with his wife when he wanted to produce an heir. They slept with boys. Mm. This is you got Jesus walks twelve disciples and a whole bunch of amazing women that never gets credit. He walks them from from uh, from the Sea of Galilee to Caesarea Philippi, and he says, "These gates of hell will not prevail. We'll go there today. It's a tomb. It's a cave." where they sacrificed and raped children, where they mm. slaughtered babies. And Jesus in his time is standing saying, these gates of hell is not my kingdom. You've mm. got to banish it. You've got to abolish it. Mm. it, it now you go and say, well, Yaku, you say porn to kids. Yes, anime hentai porn, illustrative mm. porn, in it's perfectly normal, in gender queer, in what's happening to my body for boys and girls. Right. And 200 books is on our website. Mm -hmm. It is indoctrination. Why? Yeah. Why is it indoctrination when we talk about masturbation to a five-year-old <laughs> in the classroom? Here's why. It's an authority figure. Remember what I said about trafficking? It's familial. It's an authority figure yeah. that's normalizing a sexual behavior to a child pre-puberty whose brain is not ready. They know what they're doing. They're activating the hormone. They're crunching the child's timeline 
They know the child will now be inquisitive. We have real cases. Call the boy Stephen. Stephen is in a ma he gets a math word problem. He's 10 years old. He gets a word problem in math class. His teacher talks about his own sexual experience, okay, gay sex. He learns about anal sex. He goes home that afternoon. He takes YouTube, which is free, right. no age verification. He types in two words, anal sex. Yeah. I, I recommend you don't do it, but you can test us. Graphic, graphic gang rape comes up. Right. The boy immediately goes, oh, two guys should be naked together. Two guys, one girl. She likes it. This is the purpose of a woman. This is love. Destroys love and belonging. Yeah. Caring for a woman. My role is a man. The role is a woman. Destroys that kid's mind at age 10. Yeah, it's grooming. And, and, and if we do not as parents, you know, rise up and be the protectors that God intends for us to be over our children, whether that uh, means homeschooling your children, whether that is being more engaged in what is taking place on their phones or social media, um, whatever that looks like in your family, we have got to rise up and protect our children because there are groomers out there. Um, and they are under the influence of Satan who wants to steal, kill, and destroy our children. And Elizabeth, remember, Scripture tells us the spirit recognizes the spirit. Okay? Yep. When a child is sexually vulnerable, sexually active, those individuals in society that partner with the demonic, and it's demonic, okay, it's satanic to abuse a child, they see them. You might as well put a big flashlight on their head. They recognize them because the child's language changes. Their mm. body behavior changes. We read people, human behavioral science. The child now goes and plays Minecraft and plays it live where 42-year-old men is playing live with a 10-year-old with a boy. And the type of words the child uses signals to the predator that's playing, he's been exposed. Wow. N now they go. It's, it's, it's like it's... There's sitting ducks in society and culture. It's an underbelly that most of Absolutely. us, you know, just can't even fathom. Um, those of us that are, you know, serving the Lord, doing our jobs, busy, um, you know, doing what we're supposed to do. It's hard for us to understand that this underbelly exists. But for us to keep our heads in the sand is not doing anyone a favor and especially not doing these children a favor. Unfortunately, I've only got time for one more question, Yako, and I want to ask you why you believe the radical progressives are so determined to sexualize our children. What do you believe their motivation is? Yeah, it's it's really the Lord says you cannot serve two masters. If you look or I'll spew you out. Y here's what I will tell you, Elizabeth. No man or woman, and it's just men and women, and this is Genesis 3, God made man and woman. No man or woman will fight the evil they drink from. Mm. They will not. Mic drop. N never. Why do you think 97% of the warriors that show up at, at school board meetings are women? Mm -hmm. Because most of American men in the church watch porn. Yeah, guilt, the women shame, aren't drinking from the porn as, as much. Guilt, no. shame, condemnation will mm. not allow them to show up. It's spiritual. So how do we so fight true. human trafficking? We have to take our homes back. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come which on. means every man that's listening to this podcast of yours and every wife, you got to yeah. play this show for, for your husband. Not because of Yakuboyans, right. but because of Elizabeth and because of what God's doing. But if your husbands do not look in the mirror and say, am I part of the problem or mm. the solution? Mm. The men will not show up in this country to fight for the children if they're drinking from the pool of poison. They will not. Why did men not rise up with holy fire when this country said, what is a woman? Right. Why did the men not push the women back and say, excuse me, babe, stand behind. Are you talking about my wife? Are you talking about my mother? Right. Are you talking about my sister? Mm -hmm. I, I will bind you. I will rebuke you. They didn't. <laughs> right. Why do the men still let their daughters play against boys on the court? Mm. They're compromised. They mm. look at themselves as not fit. Men cry tears and tell me, Yaku, who am I? Who am I to go tell people that they shouldn't sexualize children when, when I, I, I am, I'm demanding another human being to ex be exploited for my pleasure? Right. right.
Wow. Wow. Um, that, that is powerful. And can you just end this episode with praying for us as a nation, as a culture, um, for, for us as parents, for our pastors, um, that just a holy, holy fear and repentance would fall on us that we might be the voices that the Lord would have us be. Yeah, Elizabeth, thank you. And, and, and I really, I mean, I honor you. You're an amazing woman of God. Lord Father, when we come to you, we come with a holy reverence, a fear of God. We approach the throne room knowing that you are the almighty God, that your son, Jesus Christ, is alive. He's resurrected from a tomb, that he is seated in the mercy seat, that he is interceding as we speak for all the fallen, all the lost, the broken. I'm asking you, Father, for a holy reformation. Mm. to sweep across this nation. Yes, God. Your son makes the crooked path straight. I pray that Mm -hmm. you make the crooked path straight in America, but in every home. Mm. I pray for a spirit of conviction to fall on the fathers and the mothers and on the leaders of of churches and and, on principals and superintendents, that it is a holy conviction to fall, like a king that looked at Daniel and said, your God is the God of the universe. That mm-hmm. a king that looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and go, your God is the real God. That a mm-hmm. king that looked at Daniel in the lion's den and said, your God is the God of the universe. Mm-hmm. We thank you, Lord, that you are omnipotent, that you are, you are our Lord and our Savior. I'm asking mm-hmm. you, Father, to speak to a nation. I'm asking for a holy reverence to fall, a fear of God, for conviction to come in our hearts to repent. Yes, Lord. For where we have allowed sexual immorality to come into our homes, where we have mm-hmm. not been Ezekiel 33, men and women, mm-hmm. where we did not stand on the wall and warn of the injustice, and the blood is on our hands. Mm-hmm. So, Father, we repent. We want to be the watchman on the wall that warns of the injustice, that steps in the gap for the innocent and the broken, mm-hmm. so that the blood is not on our hands. I'm asking you, Father, for grace. Thank you for your grace and mercy that we still mm-hmm. exist as a nation. Mm-hmm. Forgive us for we, 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 we have abandoned your word. For we, we, have, we have preached a false gospel of your son. Yes, God. Lord, your son Jesus is the lamb, but he's also the lion. Mm-hmm. And I'm asking you to let the lion roar in our nation. Yes, yes. To separate the wheat from the chaff. Mm-hmm. I pray, Father, that fathers would rise up and say, I cannot be a part of the problem. I have to get help. Mm-hmm. Father, we, we do not want to be hypocrites and say, protect my daughter as we abuse other men's daughters. Mm-hmm. In this hour, Lord, I pray that your spirit move to every ear that's listening and every eye that sees that you touch them in their hearts. Yes, God. That you heal brokenness. For the woman that's never spoken of her sexual abuse, that she would get the mm-hmm. courage to speak. For the man mm-hmm. that's never been able to ask for help, that they ask for help. For us to see home by home in this nation, men saying again, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. And for those today, as we speak, that are being abused, I pray that your Holy Spirit would go to them Mm. in the deepest secret place to say, someone's coming. There is hope. Yes, Lord. There is a son and a king that gave his life for you, that bled for you, and the blood of Jesus covers you, and Mm. someone is coming. Do not give up hope. Mm. We thank you, Lord, that you restore, that you redeem. We thank you, Rafa, that you're the healer. El Shaddai, Adonai, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And thank you, Lord, that there's not another name above you and no weapon formed against you will prosper. And your word cannot return void. So we speak life over this nation. We speak life over children from conception to the grave, that the King of kings will be celebrated here, that we will protect innocence. Yes. Show us how to lead our children mm-hmm. to the way named Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I thank you for Elizabeth. I thank you for everybody watching. We bless them. Mm-hmm. I pray, Father, the blood of Jesus is a covering over Elizabeth's channel, over her voice and her family. Thank we you. worship you, Jesus. We thank yes. you. Yes. Jesus, Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Shaco. It has been an honor to have you on the podcast. I know that many people are going to be stirred and challenged, and um, I'm believing for 
for um, men to be set free as you have addressed this so powerfully today on this program. So thank you. God bless you. We love and honor you and uh, appreciate everything you're doing in the fight. Stay strong. Thank you, Elizabeth. God bless you. Hey, that's all for today on the podcast. Make sure you go to my website and subscribe to the newsletter. Social media is notorious for not distributing my posts to my followers. So I want to encourage you to go to elizabethjohnston.org and click the subscribe button and put your email in there. And I only send out one or two emails a week. We do not spam you or overwhelm you, but it is a great way to make sure that you are seeing um, our current event blog articles and any events we might be hosting. And also we notify our audience every time a new podcast drops. So make sure that you go and subscribe to the newsletter. I love you guys so much. Thank you for following and subscribing and listening. If you were blessed by this podcast and want to partner with us and you're watching by YouTube, you can click on the links below. If you're watching via the podcast app, you can go to my website at elizabethjohnston.org. There's never been a more important time to teach our children the sanctity of human life. Get my illustrated pro-life children's book, Little Lives Matter, at my website, elizabethjohnston.org. 